Hi folks, thanks for uh, coming to class today. It's a perfect day to study about solar energy. It's so nice and sunny outside. I am personally very glad to be here. I was uh, in Santa Barbara till today morning and there was a very slow crawling traffic on 101. So I'm glad I'm back for the class. So <coughs> we're going to study a very important topic today, which is uh, limits to solar energy conversion. And uh, problem set two, uh, problem set one is out and it's due next Tuesday. And I have office hours just after the class. Rysel has one tomorrow. So, uh, on, and Monday after that as well. But uh, do get started on it. And if you have problems, uh, uh, do come and bug us today. I'll try to solve at least you know a few of them during the lecture today. So uh, let's do a. How many of you are, are, are watching the videos that are on the class website? Okay, great. So I'm going to do a quick recap because that is kind of needed for the material I want to study uh, cover today. So we talked about uh, solar spectrum in the class video. So it uh, resembles closely a black body, but uh, there are. Uh, some quirks and some differences, and all of them are very different. Uh, all of them are important to understand. So this ultraviolet part of the spectrum, which is uh, uh, you know below 400 nanometer or so, this is shaved off because of the ozone present uh, in the atmosphere. And then these parts are shaved off because of the water vapor and uh, carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere as well. If you look at the angular distribution, because sun is so far away from Earth that the spectrum is essentially all coming out in parallel lines. So the angular distribution of this is less than quarter of a degree. Right? The intensity of this spectrum at the top of the atmosphere is uh, 1366 uh, watt per meter square. And uh, it, it does get filtered and uh, uh, all, all that energy does not reach the surface of the Earth. What you reach at the surface of the Earth is, uh, is denoted by these numbers, uh, AM 1.5 G and AM 1.5 D, right? So what's the difference between the G and D? If, if anybody who's been watching the videos can probably answer it. Yeah. I heard a Correct, Andrew. global and direct, right? So, uh, global includes uh, what does it? It includes direct plus direct plus diffusers, and uh, but they're not just direct and diffusers. There, are, there could be other components too. For example, if you have uh, light coming in like this, part of it will get diffused. But there's another component which is your know, light which gets reflected from say ground and then it's collected back. For example, there are a lot of people who paint their roofs white and then put panels which are actually, you know, they try to get some reflection off the ground as well. That is not accounted for in AM 1.5D, but that can be sometime important as well, right? <coughs> so uh, the intensity which uh, reaches the earth for AM 1.5 uh, direct is approximately 850 watt per meter square for when you include the diffusive component it's uh, close to 930 or 940 its spectrum is usually normalized uh, to this intensity 1000 watts per meter square and this you might remember is the number we take to calculate the nameplate capacity as well so it's not just taken arbitrarily, it, rep it represents this intensity of AM 1.5 G spectrum. So that's what you calibrate your nameplate capacity to. <coughs> Another thing which I explored in the video as well is that uh, you need to take into account the air mass. That is, if you are farther away from the equator, you will essentially have to penetrate through more and more of atmosphere. Because if you are right here, you just have to penetrate this much depth of the atmosphere. If you are far away, you have to penetrate this to uh, you know, a much higher depth and uh, that's what gives you a different air mass as you move away from the equator. And uh, 
this AM 1.5 which corresponds to a uh, latitude of 48.2 degrees which is close to what you get in Seattle. So uh, this AM 1.5 which corresponds to this cos theta of theta being uh, 1 over cos theta where theta is uh, uh, theta is 48.2 right. So any, any questions on this? <coughs> so let, let me ask you a question, right? So if you see these two panels, these are you know at two different uh, regions of the world, and there's this panel on one roof, and there's this panel on another roof. So which is which panel is located uh, you know farther away from equator? Say let's say one is in Germany and one is in India. So which one can you tell by looking at which one is the so how, how many people think this one and uh, this one is Germany? Okay, almost all of you. So, uh, okay, let me, why why do you think it's in Germany? Yeah, so the angle, the latitude of Germany is farther away from equator as say India, which is in the tropics or close to the tropics. So, the angle at which the panel is it reflects how farther you are away from the equator. <coughs> so this figure kind of demonstrates why we need, uh, why do we need tracking. So this represents the motion of the sun as uh, as we you know perceive it uh, on the planet Earth. So we perceive it each day. The sun is going from you know rising in the east, settling in the west. But besides that, it also tilts around. I mean, it also moves as you move from summer to in the center where it's in March and September, and then it's farther inclined in December, right? So, why does this happen? Again, this is a very simple question. But it yeah. So, how much is how much does how much is the tilted by? 20, 23 degrees. Right? So how much does this variation do? It's twice of the angle of the tilt, right? So it's, it's going, if the Earth is tilted by 23 and a half, this is approximately 47 degrees. And so this is a good picture to understand why do we need dual axis tracking, right? We need to track every day. If if you want to track, you need to track every day. So you need, you know, a better or if you're doing just one axis tracking, that is the direction you will track. If you need to really optimize your efficiency, if you have a say a, a concentrated solar cell or a multi-junction solar cell where you really want to optimize your uh, uh, efficiency every season and you know every day you need dual axis tracking where you track not just the motion every day but you track as it changes from uh, from the summer to the winter as well right so this <coughs> is is happen this happens because the earth is tilted so a point which was at a certain latitude if you are in the summer that latitude will decrease if you are in the northern hemisphere if you are in the southern hemisphere opposite will happen and if you are, if you go, if you're in the summer, that latitude will decrease. If you go in the winter, you can essentially add 23 and a half degree to that angle too. Uh, so <coughs> this is why we need uh, dual ac access tracking. And uh, this is what happens to your insulation or your uh, amount of. Uh, uh, sunlight reaching the the panel. So this this triangular looking curve is what is your insulation before you put the uh, tracking. And when you put a single axis tracking, then it you know, essentially uh, increases, especially off as far, especially off from the noon time. So you know during the morning and during the evenings is when you will see the maximum gain. Ideally, it should have been a constant thing, right? I mean, if you're tracking the sun all the time, why isn't this thing constant? I mean, why isn't why it falling off? Hmm? 
But you're tracking it, right? It's going down. And yeah. So if you're if you're basically uh, increasing your angle, I mean, if the, if the sun is going down, or otherwise, you know, if it's um, it's uh, let me do the picture or equation too. If the air mass is increasing, then the intensity which is falling in is essentially going to increase, is going to decrease, right? So during the <coughs> during the morning and uh, evening, your air mass is very high, or uh, uh, your sun is uh, had to penetrate through a larger uh, larger air mass. That is why it appears different colors as well because different parts get scattered differently if the air mass increases. If your air mass increases, for example, your red light gets scattered as well. That's why it appears reddish or orangish during the morning and the evening. But during the day when the air mass is low, only the you know, the lower wavelength get components get scattered and you see uh, more of a bluish sky, right? So <coughs> these are things you already know. I'm just revising it uh, in the context of uh, what we want to study today. So I want to emphasize a little more on tracking, and I want to tracking is a thing which you know, is very intuitive to understand, but uh, it adds a lot to the system cost. And uh, I'll show you a few videos, and then we'll discuss you know what are the pros and cons of doing a single axis tracking or a double axis tracking. 